What's up guys? You saw the title and if you don't know who Jay Billis is, you've probably seen him on TV or at least heard his voice. He does basketball commentary for ESPN. He used to play for Duke and then he played overseas, but he wrote an article that later became a book about basketball toughness. His article was wildly popular because since forever there's been this divide of basketball players wanting to be tough but not knowing what true basketball toughness is. There's a ton of great players out there that think they're tough and are capable of scoring 20 points a game, but they have to sit the bench because they're so mentally weak, coach can't play them. This article kind of bridges that gap from the players that want to be tough to the coaches who want their players to be tough. Coach Calipari, who now coaches at Kentucky, had his players post these definitions of toughness in their room above their bed because they're that important. I'm gonna do my best to keep this video short, but if you don't have that much time, please turn your phone sideways and take a screenshot so you can at least save these. This list makes up his definitions of toughness, and he says a bit on each one. Some are obvious and I'll skip over them in this video, but others go deeper than you think. You can think of this list kind of like a checklist, and it's a rare player who can tick every box every day. This is a great time for reflection, and if you realize you don't tick one or two or maybe half of these boxes, and you can keep watching, you're taking a huge step towards being a better player, and you're just that much closer to the varsity squad or the scholarship or the money or whatever your goals might be. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, like this video for me, and let's get into it. So our author Jay Billis, he starts off by telling us how he goes to basketball games and he sees dudes beating on their chest after like a really basic play, taunting opponents after block shots. Now people like to do the rock the baby one or the put your hand down low and show them how small they are. Maybe the worst one is dudes trying to square up and try to intimidate each other and just basically what a waste of time it is. You're asking for a tech, you're possibly hurting your team, and Jay says that's the definition of fake toughness and has zero value. I agree, and maybe I was impressed by those things as a young player, as probably most young players are. Middle school players will always be looking up to high school players, and high school players will always think they have it all figured out. But the quicker you can snap out of it and realize what true toughness is, the better. I had no idea until I grew up that the majority of the people older than the players are watching the game thinking, what are you doing? Just play the game. You look foolish and you're not helping, you're hurting. Basketball toughness has nothing to do with how much you can puff out your chest or how much punishment you can give or take. Our author Jay works through a couple more things that tough players don't do, but then he gets into his definitions. And like I said, this is just a summary, but these are some of the more important ones. When you set good screens, not only do you get other people open, but you get yourself open. Defenders have to make decisions as screens get set, how they're gonna guard them. And when people make decisions, they have the potential to make mistakes. Screening spots instead of people or setting lazy screens are a waste of everyone's time. And a tough player is a lethal screener slash scorer. As soon as they set their screen, they start to look for the offensive opportunity that was created from it. One of the times Michael Jordan went to the Olympics, Bob Knight, his coach, wouldn't let him score until he set a good screen. That helped to further develop Jordan's game, and it's just one of the many reasons he's regarded as one of the toughest players ever. This is something that kills me to watch now that I know better. Young players don't realize that offense has the advantage on every possession because they're the ones acting and the defense has to react. I had a coach explain this to me great by telling me, we're gonna race to that spot right there, go. It was a line on the floor like two feet away and he just reached out and touched it, so he beat me. I was like, of course you're gonna beat me if I don't know where we're racing to. And he's like, yeah, that's offense. We did that a couple times and I couldn't even win with him telling me where we were going and when we were starting. So imagine if he didn't tell me which line on the court we were going to and he didn't tell me when we were starting and he could juke me. Your defender has no idea what you're gonna do. So don't just run to the spot you're supposed to run to. Set up your cut to put the defense in the perfect position so there's no way they can evade the screen or get the steal. Lower level players don't realize it, but cutting isn't always about you. Maybe you cut hard one time and you get the ball for easy layup, but another time you cut hard anyways even though you don't get the ball and you still collapse the defense and it makes one of your teammates open for a shot. Players who know the play isn't for them tend to just go through the motions and that really hurts the team. The last thing Jay says about this topic is kind of funny. He tells the story of Steph Curry and at this time he was still a college player at Davidson and you think he looks young now but he was just a skinny little guy in college. In the article Jay points him out as being a really tough player because he runs guys off screen so well. He always sets up his cuts. In 2021 we can see how that paid off for him. So I just did a whole video on defense with a specific section about talking. And if you haven't watched that, you should. 
I'll put the link up here somewhere, maybe on that side, but open that in a new tab so you can watch that after you get done with this video. Tough players move with the ball. The court is only 50 feet wide, so you should never really be even 30 feet away from the ball. The jump part is because if my man passes it across the court, I need to already be in help by the time that pass is caught. This is to help my teammate just in case he gets blown by, but it's also to help me because my man wants to cut in front of my face if he can. After my man passes, I jump in that direction and I'm a wall, nobody gets by me. Like we said, the offense is acting and you're having to react on defense. Maybe whoever you're guarding is super passive and he won't try and cut in front of your face all game. That's fine, jump out ahead of many ways because since you're at that disadvantage of having to react, it's crucial you develop these proactive defensive habits to mitigate the offense's advantage. Having hands up is just a layer of protection. The more layers, the better and the greater chance that somebody's gonna get a deflection. If there's a post entry pass, it's not just the post defender's job to deny it. Whoever's guarding the passer has just as much of a responsibility to get even a finger on that ball. Tough players play with their hands up to be discouraging and take away vision. Maybe you're really active guarding a guy with hands up and he doesn't even wanna make the pass, he just wants to get rid of it. Jay tells us a pass discouraged is just as good as a pass denied. I'm just going to give you a direct quote from the article here because I don't think I can put it any better. Most defenders see the ball and hug their man because they're afraid to get beat. A tough defender plays the ball and sees his man. There's a difference. He tells a story here about being a freshman at Duke and in one of his first games, a ball rolls by him, a loose ball, and he bends down at the waist to go pick it up. A tough player from the other team dives at the ball with his whole body and of course gets possession. The Duke coach was livid and Jay said that never happened to him again because he had to learn that lesson the hard way. The first guy to sacrifice his body for it is usually who wants it more and who's gonna get it. Players think they're doing it right when they hustle and sprint by a three-point shooter to contest their shot. That's good hustle, but a tough defender closes out under control so we can take away the three-point shot and the straight line drive. Sometimes there are great three-point shooters that you need to scare off the line, but that's no excuse for just running by them and letting them go dunk or letting your big man pick up a foul at the rim. Stick with your coach's defensive principles and run them off the line towards the help who's expecting it. A tough player keeps that same sense of urgency, but has the discipline to do it the right way. If your teammate dives for the ball or takes a charge or is on the ground for any reason, a tough player will be the first one to go pick him up. If your teammate misses a free throw, tough players are the first one to go pat him, say, hey, you got the next one. Soft players are selfish and depending on how well they're playing that game will probably determine whether they go get their teammate or not. Okay, I didn't figure out this one until I was 20 years old, but tough players put their teammates first. Jay gives us an example of the bus leaving at 9 a.m. for a team trip, and not only should you wake up and be there early, but a tough player is accountable for all of his teammates and make sure they're up and early as well. They make sure their teammates eat first, and they pass the credit whenever possible. Tough players don't get their passes deflected. They stay under control and use their dribble, their pivot, and pass fakes to find the right angle and deliver the pass. A big part of this is not getting sped up by pressure, the same kind of discouraging pressure that we talked about in the get your hands up section. This one kind of goes hand in hand with what I said in my defense video about considering yourself a defender first above everything else. No matter what happens on offense, you cannot let yourself get discouraged. You have to evaluate each of your performances based on how well you defended first. The toughest players don't talk back. Whatever coach says, goes. Whether you think he's right or wrong, he probably doesn't want to hear but, 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 or some explanations. Part of your coach's job is to challenge you and tell you things that you probably don't want to hear. Jay talks about how lucky college players are and says, never again in your life will you have that opportunity that you have at the college level. A coaching staff that is totally and completely dedicated to making you and your teammates better. That's so true, but no matter what level you're at, you have to embrace the feedback you're getting. Giving criticism the right way is equally as important. If your teammate does something they shouldn't have, depending on your personality, you might just shrug your shoulders and not say anything to him. Or maybe you get in his face and ask him why he's such an idiot. Both approaches are wrong, and a tough player will stay even keeled and go over and tell him, hey, in this situation, you have to do this instead. You got it, shake it off. 
Personally, I think this is probably one of the most important on the list. So many of us are guilty of it. And sometimes when you're in a game and you're so wrapped up in it, physically, mentally, emotionally, you don't even realize how ridiculous you look hanging your head or arguing with a rep. Just this last season, I was cutting up film and I caught myself, I threw a great assist to somebody, they smoked the layup. What do I do? My hands go up on my head and you can see I'm visibly disappointed and shocked. I didn't even know I did that until I saw myself on film. But if another club saw that film who was recruiting me, I would be mortified. Anybody with any sense that saw me do that knows that I've probably missed the layup too and I need to get back on defense instead of making some ridiculous reaction. Your body language is actually a tool that can be used to show your coaching staff, your teammates, and your opponents how focused and locked in you are or how mentally weak you are. It's not easy to stay totally locked in for an hour and a half. At some point in the game, most players break concentration and maybe they forget to call out a screen or somebody cuts back door behind them. But concentration is a skill that can be improved. Tough players work hard to keep their concentration play after play. And the more you concentrate for long periods of time, the more you'll improve. Tough players are always in communication with their teammate and are echoing play calls so that they make sure their teammates are locked in and concentrating too. The ability to consolidate these separate ideas of his points, my points, his points is huge. Instead of getting caught up in how many buckets I'm getting versus one of my teammates, a tough player is just happy when the team scores. If your coach is talking to you or your group as a whole, it's for a reason. He's saying something he wants you to know, and maybe you're listening, and maybe you're even interested. But if you're looking at your shoes or you're looking off in the distance, what your body language is telling him is, I don't really care what you have to say. Maybe you think your coach doesn't care if you look at the floor because he hasn't yelled at you about it before or something. But remember, this is the guy that hopefully scouts and recruiters are gonna to talk to about you when you're ready to move up to the next level. Don't even give him a single negative thing to say about you. Just err on the side of caution and sit up straight, look him in the eye, because he's trying to help you and deserves your undivided attention. Okay, last one, and maybe the most important one. That's why I saved it for you guys who watched to the end. I know it doesn't seem like it to young players, but I wish I could impress upon you how little each individual win or loss means to your total basketball career. It really doesn't mean anything, but what means everything is your ability to get up the next day and grind the same way, regardless of a win or a loss. Tough players enjoy a win, but are never satisfied, and the losses can't shake them. That was the last definition of toughness that we're gonna go over in this video. I'm not gonna do them all just cause it'd be a 50 minute video nobody would watch. But I'm just gonna finish with his last words cause I think they're pretty good. He says, when I was playing, the players I respected most were not the best or most talented players. The players I respected most were the toughest players. I don't remember anything about the players who talked a good game or blocked a shot and acted like a fool. I remember the players who were tough to play against. Anybody can talk. Not anybody can be tough. There you have it guys. If you made it this far, you're a legend. This is probably one of my longest videos yet, but there are some gems in there. Everything in there I felt like I had to include. I'll link Mr. Billis's article, Toughness, in the description box below so you can read the whole thing for yourself. I left a bunch out and you can see just what he has to say instead of my thoughts on it. Check out my other videos to keep getting better and I'll see you in the next one.